Giving a small dog a haircut can be challenging. Depending on the coat type, clipping and scissoring techniques, they may vary. Our small dogs definitely can prove to be sensitive to brushes and clipper vibration even. Our small dogs often have soft coats that mat very easily. Most of our small dogs are lap dogs and we pet them a lot, which transfers oils from our hands into their coat. Trimming a small dog is not as challenging as you may think, my friends. In this video, I will definitely show you all the secrets that you need to know to give your small dog a haircut and keep them looking beautiful and fluffy, just the way you like them. I'm Amy Lee. I am a certified professional pet groomer since 2003. I am also a content creator on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel called Go Groomer, and on that channel, I bring a new voice to the pet grooming industry, one that includes pet owners as a valuable consumer. By sharing my secrets of the pet grooming industry on my YouTube channel, it allows me to give pet owners the opportunity to provide quality care for their beloved pets at home, increasing value to their pets' lives, as well as increasing the bond they share with their pet. It's pretty awesome. This is Peanut. She's a cockapoo. She just came in. I was misting her with a little bit of dematting spray so I can get her brushed out before the bath. She's not really matted, but she definitely has some dead coat in here. You'll also notice that she has a lot of eye buildup and you may see that in your own pets. So I'm gonna show you how to safely remove that in the tub. So stay put for that. And the reason for pre-brushing her, as you can see, is we're getting a lot of dead hair in the brush. So we're removing that instead of washing it. And the next step to successfully trimming your dog and giving them a haircut is definitely in the bathtub. The bath is the most important part of the groom, guys. I want you to understand that. So we're using safe products. We're using an eye groom shampoo. I use a Prima bathing system, but you can definitely hand wash your dog. I'll link a video in the card above that's gonna show you how to best wash your dog at home without professional bathing setups. I got you covered on that, my friends. So we're using a safe conditioner as well, which was the Seuss conditioner, and I'm using a very safe product around her eyes. It is the Petology Puppy Faces Facial Shampoo. It does not burn your dog's eyes. It's extremely safe. I have tested it in my own eyes. But I wanna remind you, it's very important that we do wash our dog's faces very, very good, because there's a lot of bacteria, a lot of buildup on their faces around the eyes and the mouth. And this is how we're gonna remove it. So we've let that product sit on for about two, three minutes, massaged it through, loosened up all the buildup. And I'm just taking a small flea comb. You can use your pet grooming comb to remove and slough off that buildup. This is nastiness. When we get to the trimming stage, if you had all this buildup in your dog's coat, it, you're not gonna be able to give your dog a proper haircut. Now we are adding the conditioner to peanut. Condition every dog, guys. I don't care what the breed is. This is a pet. We need to rebalance the skin and coat. So we are using that gentle Seuss conditioner. I'm gonna massage it all through peanut's coat. And I'm also gonna let this product sit on her coat for a couple minutes as I run my hands through her skin and coat and just even disperse it throughout peanut so it can do its job. I did rinse the shampoo completely off of her coat before I conditioned her. I think it's important for me to remind you guys that all products have a sit time on your pet. We did a facial cleanser that has to sit for a few minutes so it can clean your pet. Shampoo has to sit for a few minutes before it can clean and adhere to the dirt and the conditioner has to sit for a few minutes too. So it is a process in the tub guys. Take your time. Don't rush through the bathing or your dog's coat will not be ready for trimming. And over rinse all the product out of your dog's coat until the water runs clear. After the bath, I trim the nails because the nails are less brittle. They're a little bit moisturized from the bathing process. So I follow these same steps every time I groom every dog, guys. This keeps me on track. It keeps me from taking all day to groom one dog. If you struggle with nail trimming, I have a fantastic video to help you through it, my friends. I'll link it in the card above. Now let's take a look up close here at Peanut's eyes. Do you see how well we did, guys? Gently cleaned it out of there. You can tell it's a little pink. The skin was a little pink under there. It was a little irritated. And that's what buildup can cause on your dog's skin is irritation. I am using a force dryer to dry peanut. I also have a stand dryer fluffing her top knot and her ears and her beard. This is the drying process that I use. Force dryers are available to you too. I'll link one in the description.
description below. They are fantastic. They do not use heat. They're safer for your dog and they fluff out the coat. Now she's ready for clipper work. She's bathed, brushed, dried. Her coat is ready. I am using a guard comb attachment on my Wall KM10 clipper. This is a 3 8 of an inch guard comb and I'm leaving her coat approximately 3 8 of an inch and I'm just starting at the base of the jaw and coming all the way down the dog's body, her legs, all in the direction that the coat naturally lays. This is going to be the easiest, tidiest, prettiest little pet trim for you to put on your small dog. Starting at the base of the skull, we're going to come down her back, down the sides, down her shoulders, and that is all leaving what's going to later be our head assembly, which we're going to take that length a little bit longer. There again, starting at the base of the skull, coming on down the body, on down the legs, down the back of peanut, and we are using that same three eighths of an inch snap on comb to set all this length on her body and legs. So it is a very easy trim for you guys to follow. While you focus on me trimming down the rest of Peanut's body, legs, her belly with the three eighths of an inch, I'm gonna play a little tune for you. Just focus on the trimming. And now we're going to trim the head. We're going to use a different size snap-on comb. We're going to switch it up to one half of an inch. We're going to unpack our blade. Very important. All the little hair clippings get packed in there and it affects the way your trim looks. So we popped on that half inch snap-on comb and we're coming towards the muzzle from the base of the skull. So we're leaving all this a little bit longer than the body length, bringing everything forward from the cheek in front of the ear, under the jaw, everything up towards the nose. Even the 
muzzle. We're gonna trim that as best we can. Take your time. We are setting the length all around her head, guys, so it's nice and even for us, and it's gonna eliminate a lot of scissor work by setting the length with our guard comb. One important thing to remember is to always watch what my opposite hand is doing. Right now, it's holding her ear out of the way. Here, my opposite hand is holding up her leg so I can get in here to clip around her sanitary area. This is trimmed with a 10 blade only, guys. Only a 10 blade and a very light touch because they can be very sensitive to a clipper here in this area. Their skin is very soft and tender. And that's the same for around the anus area. We're only going to use a 10 blade here and we are not putting any pressure on the blade at all because this is a very sensitive area, guys. Now I'm switching over to my Kenji Flash 5, 5 in one clipper set to a 10 blade. I'm going to trim around the eyes just to let that area breathe a little bit. We saw all the buildup that definitely adheres to the hair and we want to alleviate that for her. Now is the only time I'm going to switch over to a 30 blade and that is for in the paw pads. And here again, guys, this is a sensitive area too. So I just like to use the lightest touch when I'm trimming the hair out from inside of the paw pads. And it helps them to get a better grip when they're walking around, especially on our older dogs and keeps them from slipping around. Use a very light touch. Now it's time for the scissor work. We have completed all the clipper work. It's time for scissor work. Basically, we were only having to trim off anything that our guard comb couldn't get to. We're just trying to really seal in the shape of this dog right here with our scissor work, if that makes sense, guys. Just taking off what is obstructing the nice little shapes that we're after, the shape of her leg, the shape of her foot, the shape of her face. We're gonna get to that in a minute. When we're performing this scissor work, guys, Guys, I want you to pay attention to the fact that I really am only using the tip of my shear for much of this work on peanut today because so much of it was done with the guard combs. So I'm just having to take off very little that is just obstructing the shape of the, her legs, her feet. These are my shears made by Kenchi. They're called Sapphire. They come in a set of three if you like, or you can buy them individually. They are very precise and they are a very nice well-balanced shear for the beginner pet groomer or the pet groomer who grooms a lot of dogs a day. The point of the shear of this shear is very pointy, which makes it easy to round out those feet. And I like to keep the legs standing on the table so I don't nick the pads. So here is a tricky area. This is right here. There's this little back knuckle. So you really want to have a lot of control of your shears and just tidy up anything that is obstructing the look the shape that we're after. That's it. We're not removing much hair at all. But here's a mistake you may often make. You have to use your brush and your comb often to lift the hair. It's packed down in there with the other hair. You need to constantly brush and comb up to lift the hair so that you can create a, a nice even shape on your foot, on your leg, wherever you're trimming. And look at my other hand right now. I was comfortably resting her arm in my hand so that she could stand on three legs and be comfortable with my scissor work. If your dog's not comfortable in the way that you have them positioned and the way they're standing, they will be more likely to move around and to cause your, you know, especially when you're doing scissor work, you want your dog holding still. So look, I have my other hand on her right now. I always have my other hand on the dog somewhere to remind them to stay still and to stay standing so that I can do my scissor work. These scissors are sharp, which is the reason we would never rush through our scissor work because we don't want to make a mistake. They are very sharp, but that's a good thing because they're cutting the hair beautifully. I want you to also notice how I am moving around the dog. I'm working around the dog. You know, she's staying still and I'm moving around her as much as possible so that I can do the scissor work nice and easy and easy on her more importantly. But don't forget to use that comb. You've got to lift the hair every time you want to scissor something. You lift the hair with the comb. It's very important. And honestly, curved shears make this type of scissor work easy because it makes it easy for you to get into those little areas while you're rounding the feet or, you know, just trimming down the inside of the leg. The curved shears actually are nice to use instead of straights. Now I'm using my Kenchi Love 17 tooth chunker shear to scissor the shape on this dog's face. Um, literally, I'm 
around scissoring with the chunker shear. That creates a more blended look versus a straight shear or a curved. But I am going to move back over to my curved shear to blend in the skull area on peanut here. This is where our length was a little different from the top of the head to the body. We used two different lengths. Lifting the ear back, we're now going to tidy up all this just messy stuff back here with that blending shear. It, it does a fantastic job. And there's all types of blending shears, guys. Chunker shears on this type of a slight wavy coat work great. Chunker shears also work great on the doodle coat. One thing that I want you to focus on while we're trimming the head here, remember we've set the length with our guard comb. So we're just sort of drawing in the lines with our scissor work. What our snap-on comb couldn't create, we're creating the shape with our scissor work. We're not really trying to come in here and make a lot of changes because we have already set the length nicely with those guard combs. And remember the guard combs are the reason why this is an easy trim. Cutting down on the scissor work and the blending shear work that we need to do is the idea of simplifying our grooming methods, guys. And that's what this video is all about. It's how to get you there quicker without having to do so much professional scissor work, just like we're doing right now, it's minimal. And I do like to do a lot of the scissor finish work with a blending shear, whether it's a chunker shear or it's my blending shear from the Sapphire line, which is a very nice blender. It's very gentle blending and it just softens all our lines and that's how you get those perfect looking shapes on your dog just sets you apart makes your groom look very professional blending shears are a true secret guys to grooming any small dog especially when it comes to shaping up those ears and that's where we're at right now we're going to shape up these ears we're going to shorten them up a little bit so i'm definitely going to use my curved shear or a straight shear guys shape them up set the length i'm going to come straight across where i just scissored to make sure that both ears are the same length. Comb everything down, take a look at your dog straight on, and take a look and see, are those ears the same length? And no, they're not. So we're gonna fix that up. This is a true secret to how to get those ears the same length. Looking at her straight on, we're gonna take a look and see what we need to nip off. And at this point, we are just about finishing up Peanut, tidying up those loose ends, that's all. Take your time with it. Take a look at everything. Now I'm gonna use a blending shear right on the ends of those ears to make it look a little bit more natural, like it grew that way instead of it was scissored that way, because that's the magic of blending shears. That's why I use them. So we're just nipping off anything that is sticking out over the shape that we are interested in for our little peanut. And she's done, she's beautiful. This entire groom took me an hour and a half from start to finish, from the moment Peanut walked in until I sent her home. But I'm a professional, I've probably groomed about 100,000 dogs, if not more. An hour and a half, let that be your goal. To start out with, give yourself three hours and take a break in between. But your small dog is gonna look beautiful if you follow these methods of grooming.